Hi, Bill. Uh, Bill, you have experience uh, uh, in the in the solar um, world. Yeah, electricity in general. And yeah, world. free ever since you know high school. I've got electrical um, knowledge. I worked for ADT. I've had my own alarm system um, company. Um, I worked at a printing company, shop foreman, working, fixing everything like the printers, electrical work, plumbing work, and stuff. Left New York, and now I'm here for about four years now. This is your uh, rig, Bill? Yeah, this is my rig. Um, I've had it for four years since I left New York. I bought it really cheap. I did, I redid the roof. I tore the siding off. I re-insulated it. Um, some people sometimes call me the mad scientist because I do things to my rig that most people wouldn't. For instance, um, under here, there's a hydrogen generator. It's a uh, separator. It's a hydrogen separator. It separates the oxygen from hydrogen. You can use the hydrogen gas uh, to cut with, to heat with, and stuff like that. And that's this thing here, this one cell, and there's going to be three or four more cells like it. And hydrogen costs more to produce if you plug into regular company power or utility power. But if you're using solar, it doesn't cost you anything. So I make my own hydrogen for heating and for uh, doing uh, light welding work. Um, over here on this side, um, this is where I put my inverter. That's just a common installation thing there. But right here, there's a copper pipe that wraps all around my whole RV. It's baseboard steam heating. I use a, I use a pressure cooker for the steam. Wraps all the way around, comes out in my shower and I have a sauna in my shower and baseboard heat all in one one unit. Back here I got a rain catch so I don't always have to get water. Um, it go, hooks up to the gutter up there, it comes down through here it goes in my water inlet so I don't have to make trips to get water all the time. It's filtered through here and automatically goes in there when it rains. If I use it all up, yeah, then I'll go and get water somewhere else. Um, something I came up with, because I couldn't see wasting water when I could be using it. And I go get it if I can just grab it from the sky. A lot of people ask me what this is over here. And basically what this is, is a, what they call a Bedini circuit. Um, you can see it on YouTube. They use big bicycle wheels and stuff like that, but I broke it down smaller so... I can pack it in my RV, but basically what this does, it uses back EMF to charge a dead battery or a bank of capacitors that you can jump, jump a car with. So, and I made that just because I could use it for redundancy. If things, if it's cloudy, I can charge my batteries off my car battery through this if I have to. It takes eight hours, but it works really well. Um, Very nice. Also have a this is a shortwave radio. Um, they used to put them on transatlantic um, um, zeppelins or durables uh, from France to um, New York City. That's the antenna they used to stay in contact with each other. It's called the J-Pole antenna. I built that myself. Um, I can use any frequency by sliding these little sliders up and down and tune it to any frequency in the AM band. So in case of you know any non-communication and whatever I have a shortwave radio I could talk to anybody else within a hundred miles or I could use skip and talk thousands of miles if I want so that's one of my other things I've done all and these things uh, you've learned on your own how did you yeah. uh, uh, I get tired of doing the same thing even solar work I don't mind doing it but I do always have to change and do things uh, I just oh, I guess I always like taking things apart and building things Ever that since I could you use. Were very young. Yeah, it was one of those eight-year-olds that took mom's toasters apart and everything apart, and she'd yell at me, but they were already broken anyway, so no harm, no foul. But so yeah, you know, and then I got a. Uh, I built a distiller. I feel that's useful for making distilled water. For instance, I made distilled water for someone that had low low uh, battery water. You can't put regular water in it because it's got too many, much minerals in it, so I took the regular 
calcified water, ran it through my still, and now he had distilled water to uh, fill it. Rather than run 15 miles in the town and 15 miles back, I just put some regular water in it and gave him good distilled water. He didn't have to make the trip. You can also make your own fuel with it for an alcohol stove. Um, any plant material turn into alcohol with just sugar and yeast. And you can use it for cooking, use it for drinking if you want. Um, sterilizing things. You've got a wrinkled shirt running from the steamer. It has a lot of uses. So I don't build anything or I don't do anything if it doesn't have more than two or three uses. And I could use it on the road. So that's what I do. I also put a central back in here. I don't know how many RVs have a central back in it. But which is I, which is what? I'll show you real quick. Basically, if you most handheld vacuums, you have to drag a cord around and everything. Well, here, all I have to do is turn the vacuum on here, and the hose is long enough so that I can do the whole RV and the canister is outside so when you're vacuuming even with the best um, filters on it you're going to get dust coming out of the bag but finer dust this the, the whole vacuum is outside the rig so you're just picking up dust it's not blowing back in at you so and then you don't have the cords I'll have this to worry about and it never gets tangled on anything and it's real easy to use. So then I just put it down when I'm done vacuuming. And I just put it back away. And that's it. I don't have to wind up the cord. I don't have to change um, the bag or anything like that. And it's it's done. Excellent. So yeah, it's a central back. And the reason why they call it a central back is because the vacuum cleaner is centrally located in one spot and the hose can go anywhere you want. So this right here is my radiant heat. It's the copper pipe that came outside that I showed you earlier. And all it is is half inch copper pipe with beer cans threaded onto the pipe. It wraps here, goes around my bed, and then it comes out my shower here. The steam comes out so I also have a sauna as it's heating the house. Or if I want to take a sauna, I can just sit in there and get get a steam sauna so, so that's just one of the few things there's other things that I do but you know those are just you know the things that come to mind right now this is a, a distiller I made for like I said I already basically gave a rundown for it but recently just a couple days ago someone was out of distilled water for their battery so I just took in the regular tap water ran it through here they had distilled water for their batteries you can't put regular mineralized water in a battery because You'll just ruin the plates and short it out because there's iron and other conductive stuff in the water that'll ruin a battery. So I made them, you know, uh, half a quart of regular distilled water. You didn't have to run into town to get it and stuff. And it's got other uses too. You can make oil essence. If you've got lavender, you can make lavender oil with it. Um, got a wrinkled shirt. You can steam it, get the wrinkles out of it. Um, if you run into a place and you don't have any water and it's just muddy, swampy water, you can stick it in here and out comes clean drinkable water. Um, it's got a lot of uses. Like I said, I don't make anything unless it's got more than one use. And also, this if this was gone and this was outside and hooked to that pipe that I showed you for the radiant heat, this is what gives me my radiant steam heat and serves as a sauna by just pushing steam all around the baseboard. So it's got a lot of uses and it's really easy to break down take it down pull a couple strings and I stick behind the couch put that away and it's basically fits fits away sets up fast and easy so I designed it to break apart really quick and travel without having a big coiled wire as a still this here is just basically this is the coil right here it's a cooling jacket and this is a straight through pipe so as Anything's coming through here, this cools it down and it turns it back into moisture, water, or alcohol, or lavender oil, or whatever. So this little piece does the same job as a big copper coil that you have to clean out. So 
and I clean it out with a 12 gauge shotgun copper brush goes right in here cleans it out same thing there cleans it out run steam water through it and I can make anything um, and I don't have to worry to take hours about cleaning a still so I made that kind of like short process so the common point of uh, most if not everything you have here is just cheap materials simple and then redundancy right right Multiple everything redundancy especially for heat you can always use your stove or your oven on low for heat so that's one heating source the second heating source is the steam radiant heat I could take this outside and have radiant steam heat running through so that's what would be a second one my third one for heat would be a little heat buddy that would be like number three you know for heat and um the fourth one i know i got one more i just can't think of what it is but um uh, yeah so heat is really important so i got like at least three or four sources of heat oh yeah the alcohol that i make i've got an alcohol stove that i made and so if i make alcohol from any plant material or just taking a couple cans of old beer i could take regular 3% alcohol and boost it up to 160 proof which is enough for a very good strong blue flame that you can cook on and heat with so that's the other heating thing do you have propane by the way uh, yes I have propane that's what I, I primarily use propane oh I also built this I forgot all about it this is a wood stove that I made out of a propane tank stuck in here and I've got yet to install it but it's Two propane tanks are welded together, right? And the smokestack here, this is the door opening here. Um, you really can't get it out, but it's gonna go right over here in this spot here. And it's kind of like a rocket stove because it gets fed with oxygen through the back that sticks outside. So there's not a vacuum here when you got a fire. It, it's not sucking the air from inside, it's taking it from the outside and it shoots it underneath the wood pile and you get a really strong radiant heat that way and I can adjust it with different little valves to slow down the burn or to speed it up so that's something else I made also for heat so I guess I got five sources of heat all together very so. cool I noticed uh, those guitars here yeah you, uh, I, I, I play and then a couple of guys here that you know volunteered their time they like to play or at least do do what they you know uh, they like to strum on it to their ability or whatever, but they weren't tuned in. Um, so I'm a bit of a Lutheran, so to speak, which is someone that fixes guitars. Their strings were way too far away from the fretboard from when they bought them. So what I did was I straightened the fretboard, and then I sand all the frets nice and flat, and I crown them again so they're nice and smooth, and it plays like a, a $200 guitar. After I get done with it, it's an $850 guitar. So, and I did that for them for nothing because their fingers were hurting playing. And I told them why, and they said, can you fix it? And I go, yeah, so I did. And now I, I did two of them yesterday, and they're happy. I'm happy that I could help them out. So that's the kind of thing to the people that are here. We all help each other out. And then when you do something good for them, they'll come back with something a couple days later and return it some other way. So it works really good. So as far as this whole band build goes, it's really a great thing, a great experience, and everybody here is really, really nice. Yes. And it's my first year here, and I'll probably be back again next year.